Whenever we add new devices to the network, one of the things we have to take care of is to make sure that we apply the proper configuration uh, to the interfaces for the device that we're about to connect up to the network. Uh, that's especially important for devices that process real-time media, such as um, IP phones or a digital media player, an IP video surveillance camera, uh, or a wireless access point. All of these devices have recommended configurations uh, to, uh, to make sure that we can support the quality of service, port security, and other features that we need on an end-to-end -end basis as the traffic flows through the network. The general process that we follow for that is usually we'll go and consult a design document. Uh, Cisco over the years has published a number of uh, best practice design guidelines either through SRD design documents or Cisco validated design documents and we can look through those documents to find a recommended best practice configuration template for each of the devices that we want to connect up to the network. So once we find that configuration template, um, maybe we'll use it as it is, maybe we'll, get, maybe we'll modify it a little bit, uh, but we generally take that template and apply it to the switch uh, configuration and then we can go ahead and connect up our device. And that process is usually manual and, and we'll typically do that every time we connect up a device to the network. Well, there's a way that we can actually automate that whole process of finding the best practice configuration, applying it to the switch, and even detecting the device that's connected to the network auto automatically so that whole process happens automatically. And we can do that with something known as MediaNet Auto Configuration. MediaNet is an end-to-end -end architecture from Cisco uh, that's designed to provide end-to-end -end quality of service um, for things like uh, video cameras and phones and, and media players and so on. So as that traffic flows through the network, uh, it's treated with the proper quality of service to maintain the proper um, quality experience for the user as they're using those devices, viewing the video feeds, and so on. And one portion of MediaNet focuses specifically on the endpoints so that as we do connect them up to the network, uh, the proper configuration is applied automatically. So that's what we're going to focus on here is to take a look at how MediaNet auto configuration can simplify the whole process of connecting up devices to the network. And so to do that, uh, I'm going to use a Catalyst 3560 LAN switch uh, as well as the devices behind me here and we'll see how that process can happen automatically. Now before I show you um, how it works, what I'd like to do is first take a look at the configuration that's on the Catalyst LAN switch right now. So as you can see, it's a very generic configuration. It's a default configuration uh, for the most part, other than uh, right here I've got a DHCP scope applied. I have that in order to support my digital media player uh, since it needs a DHCP address in order to boot up. As I continue to scroll down here and take a look at the interfaces, uh, you can see my interfaces here. Uh, there's actually no custom commands that have been applied to the interface. Uh, so this is basically a default configuration with no customization whatsoever. Uh, so now what I need to do first in order to enable that MediaNet auto configuration process on the LAN switch, there's one command that I enter globally. And once I enter that, that now turns on the auto configuration process so that any device that's connected to the switch will automatically be detected and the proper configuration will be applied at the interface level. Okay, so let me go ahead into configuration mode and I'm going to apply that configuration. As you can see here, it's macro auto global processing is the command. One command that I enter, I've just now turned on the auto configuration process. Now, uh, to see it work the rest of the way, what we do is plug in the devices. And as I connect in the devices, you can see that I'm getting interface messages here. As the devices boot up and the interfaces come up, we see those messages scroll across the console. And now, uh, as, the boot, as the devices boot up, we'll see the uh, automatic detection messages too. In fact, we see one here for the phone. Right here it says, Auto Smart Port Insert Device Phone. Uh, we can see that message right here. And then also it tells us that... Um, there was a smart port event uh, right here. There was a smart port event executed here. So what that did is it executed uh, an um, auto smart port macro to apply the best practice configuration for an IP phone to the interface that it's connected to. So let's take a look now at the configuration for the first interface. 
And if you recall, when we looked at it before, there were no commands under the interface level. Now, you can see all these switch port commands that have been inserted. In fact, as we scroll down, we'll see some comments here. Uh, we can see right here, macro description, Cisco phone event. That shows us that all of these configuration commands were inserted as a result of the auto smart ports macro that was executed when the phone was automatically detected. And likewise, if I continue to scroll down, uh, once again, there's the first interface, and if I scroll down, okay, so I can see the other ones are empty, and then down here on four, number four is actually the IP camera. So we can see that the IP camera has booted, it was automatically detected, and that configuration was inserted as well. And now on the bottom, I see another detection message. I see here, auto smart port, uh, the device in this case was my DMP, and so it actually applied the DMP configuration. And then lastly, we just saw the detection event for the access point. So it tells us we had another auto smart port event. In this case, a wireless AP was inserted. Okay, and we see that here. It tells us the AP was detected there. So now if I once again look at all my uh, interfaces, here's interface one, and here's interface two. Uh, this is for my DMP. Um, here is interface uh, for the wireless access point, number three. Here's interface four with my IP uh, video camera. Okay, so now that I've gone through the entire detection process, each of the smart port macros was executed based on the device that was detected, and we've applied the appropriate configuration as you can see there. And now, once I disconnect, if I disconnect all of these devices, you'll see the interfaces go down. But what you'll also see is you'll see that the auto smart ports macros are executed once again to remove the configuration syntax that was applied. So now if I go back and look at my configuration, now I see once again my interface uh, commands have basically disappeared. And so this is helpful uh, anytime that you're uh, moving devices around on the switch or you're uh, repatching, for example, and devices end up on a different port. You don't have to worry about what ends up where because the entire process is completely automatic. Okay, so MediaNet auto configuration um, is the process that's doing this for us. Uh, so as you can see, there's a number of benefits here. Um, first of all, obviously it simplifies the whole process of um, getting a device configured properly onto the network. That device was completely automated. Also, by automating that process, uh, hopefully we'll reduce errors there. Uh, if we're following a process where we're manually, manually entering syntax, obviously there's room for uh, typos and, and other ways to, uh, to, to uh, apply errors to the configuration. So hopefully we improve accuracy as well. Okay, so there's a look for you at uh, what's known as uh, Cisco's MediaNet auto configuration process uh, that works on our Catalyst LAN switches uh, for devices that we see here.